Hey everyone, Mr. Magintosh here, and we've got a new Open Core Legacy patch or update available, 2.4.1. In this video, we're going to go over everything new in this update, including some things that we need to talk about and what's been happening with the kernel debug kits. And we can talk about Mac OS Tahoe, which is coming up in two weeks. And we'll talk about whether you should update at all. Let's jump in and get started. So the 2.4.0 update was released on May 12th, about three or four months ago, and has been running very well so far, except when Apple changed some things in the software update mechanism for Mac OS Sequoia, where Open Core Legacy Patcher thought that 15.7, which is in beta mode right now, and will be released as a public release in about two weeks when Mac OS Tahoe is released at the same day. So when you went into Open Core Legacy Patcher, and then you would click Create Mac OS Installer, and then click on Download Mac OS Installer, it would check, and what it would actually find is 15.7 as the latest release. And users that are using Open Core Legacy Patcher for the first time would download this and not know that they're installing a beta. To make things worse, Apple did not release the kernel debug kit for the machines that required it for 15.6 and 15.7. And Open Core Legacy Patcher is set to not install a older kernel debug kit than two releases behind. So it refused to install the root patches and leaving users in a big lurch. The good thing is, Apple released the 15.6 kernel debug kit, so that fixed that issue if you're on 15.7. So if you did that and you were waiting for a solution, then you can update right now and then get your root patches. You do not have to reinstall anymore. One of the big fixes in this release for 2.4.1 is a hotfix, and what it'll do is it put in a fix for the missing wrong installer showing up when downloading an installer. If we look at the latest version now, on 2.4.1, we can take a look at the fix there. So we'll click on Create Mac OS Installer, click Download Mac OS Installer, and we can now see that it's properly fixed to only put in here the production version of Mac OS Sequoia, so we won't be installing a beta version anymore. So let's take a closer look at this fix. So we can, and, and by the way, if you wanted to be able to see other versions, you could click on the download other versions right here to be able to see those other versions. For example, if we wanted to be able to test out the beta or install a older version. That's fixed, but when we look at the patcher notes here, we want to be able to see what was actually changed and what was actually done to be able to make sure that the latest version is detected. It was using the Apple development software update catalog to get and it was able to parse through there and find the production version. But when that change in there, it wasn't able to do that anymore. So now we can see in here that the scripts have been updated to use Apple DB as an install assistance source. So we look at the Apple DB website here and then we can actually sort by release. So if we look here, we can see all these are the release. And if we click on the beta releases, we can see this is what shows up as beta, Mac OS 26, beta 9, and 15.7, which is RC or beta 5. So now it's able to see those release versions and make sure that we don't get other versions in there. So that's a good fix. One thing I wanted to show is that there was another fix that I noticed in here. So let's talk about that. Now the kernel debug kit location, if your Mac requires it, and this is usually any Mac that just as a default has an AMD GPU or needs any other piece from there. And I always put a list in the description below for all the KDK requirement Macs. And this is listed in the Macintosh hard drive library developer KDKs. And you'll see two things in here. The folder is created when the package installs all the files to here. But when a Mac OS update is installed, it actually damages these files. So the patcher keeps a package here just in case and then it reinstalls it fresh to fix that damage whether it's damage or modifications or whatever it is it messes it up and that's what you should see when we looked in the log set successfully remove the kdks and you can see that this happened on the day yesterday when the patcher came out when i was doing some testing before i made this video look at all these patcher versions that it removed but you can see it removed everything from 15.5 to 15.3.2 now if we go to our 15 inch 2017 Let's take a look at that. When we go into the KDK folder here, look at all these old KDK stuck over. So let's go through a full update process to see if these get cleaned out properly. Now it's not the biggest deal in the world if these are still here, but 
it starts to build up some extra space if you have a smaller SSD hard drive. You can see anywhere between 800 and 900 megabytes for each KDK plus how big the folder size was. So you can do a command I to get information about that. It's a gigabyte per folder so that you can see how that starts to pack and why they're cleaned out in there. And look at that, sure enough, we are fully cleared out on our kernel debug kit folder. Look at that. This is what was building up on this system. So that's definitely a huge improvement because we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gigabytes plus all these 900s and that's taken up a decent amount of space. So we are now fully cleaned up and that's a nice fix in there. That's definitely confirmed on three different machines. So that's good to see. Okay, I'm gonna go over walking you through installing the latest version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher application, updating your OpenCore EFI bootloader and your root patches and the KDK if your Mac didn't get the latest version of KDK. For example, if you installed 15.6 or 15.6.1 before the 15.6 KDK was released by Apple, then you're gonna get a KDK update for your root patches when you update the app. And that's something you need to be aware of before we move forward. So now we're on our 2011 non-metal Mac. The Open Core Legacy Patcher launch agent kicked off and checked and said, Hey, we got a new version, here's a new version, and here's what's fixed in here. This is your tip off to decide whether you wanna install this or not. This is an important bug fix for anybody building installers for OpenCore. So new users, if you're building a new machine, you don't wanna install the beta version, so you need to install this update and you need to have this update when you're building macOS installers. So we wanna install this, and we've decided that we wanna move forward and install the app we want to update the open core bootloader and the root patch. So we're going to download and install and preparing to download. That's going to download directly from the GitHub. When this is happening, it's putting it in a temporary directory and then it's going to unpack and then install the open core patcher to update the application. And then we will be walked through the process because that's step one done. Step two, you will be asked if you want to be able to update the open core EFI bootloader and we'll do that. And then we will install the latest version of the root patches. And most likely, because we, we know that this is running 15.6.1, we're gonna get that 15.6 KDK to update the root patches. So that is a pretty big update to this machine. It's not just installing the same patches it had before, we're getting an updated with the latest version of the kernel debug kit files for all the drivers required. Now again, this is only for kernel debug kit Macs, like for example, anything with an AMD GPU in there. And I usually always put the list of KDK Macs down in the description below. So if you don't see that and you're using the Metal Live support package, you don't have to worry about all the KDK stuff. You're gonna get the Metal Live support package for your NVIDIA system uh, directly from the GitHub from OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So right now, it's installing the application version in the background and updating OpenCore application. And when that's done, it's gonna tell you that it's complete and we walk through the next step to be able to update the OpenCore EFI. There we go. 2.4.1 has been installed in library application support Dortania. It's closing the old version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher 2.4.0 and opening up 2.4.1. And there it is. 2.4.1 has been installed. Would you like to update OpenCore on your root volume for the bootloader? Yes, we do. We're going to install the disk. And we also know by looking at the patch notes where OpenCore itself has not been updated, it's still 104 release. We're gonna click our EFI. Now it's loading the EFI partition. There it is, We're updating them, and then it's going to unmount them. And there we go. The third and final part of the update process, would you like to update your root patches? Now this is where the kernel debug kit is going to come into play because we know for a fact that we updated the system before the 15.6 kernel debug kit came out. So we're gonna see that as a part of the process. We're gonna click on yes. And we saw that we updated in August, so we know for sure, and we're on 2.4.0, that it's going to realize that we need to download the latest kernel debug kit. We'll hit, click on start root patching, and there it is. 15.6 KDK 24G84. Now, there is no kernel debug kit for 15.6.1 because that was just a small security update. And the 15.6 is totally fine and that's exactly what we need. It's gonna download that, it's going to cache it, it's going to install it, 
to library developer Katie case I'm gonna put it right here so let this finish here it's going to unpack and, and depending on how old your Mac is is how long it takes to unpack the kernel debug kit sometimes it can take a while especially for machines older than 2010 2009 it takes a while and then it'll be ready to go install the root patch so we'll let it finish here now it's going to validate the KDK and it's going to install it and that's why I like to keep this open so we can actually see what's happening here. We have the KDK folder cleared out, and that's part of that new process that I talked about that hasn't been happening before. It's gonna install that, and then this will be updated with the KDK stored in there when this is complete. And there it is, there's your folder, and there's your backup package, done. Creating the backup, it's telling you exactly what it's doing. Okay, we're back up and look at that. We got a nice clean KDK folder like we saw before, cleaned out and saved some space. We open up Open Core Legacy Patcher. We'll be able to see that we are on the latest version of 2.4.1. We have the Open Core 104 release and we have the latest version of the root patches. By clicking on app, we can see that we are on 2.4.1 app. We are on release 104 for open core and down here at the bottom, we can see the version of root patches that we have installed today, 2.4.1. So we are good to go on this 2011 17 inch MacBook Pro. Now I wanted to mention the logging system. If you go into Sequoia or if you go into Macintosh hard drive users, shared this is where the logs used to be and that's why you can see in here the last time august 20th was the last log file written to users shared on 2.4.0 but if we look in here users library logs and then dortania are new sets of logs and this is run anytime there's a patching system the launch name and the auto patcher kicks in anytime you restart the system and you can see by what's happening in the log file when you see it in a larger file than two this is just checking nothing nothing's needed done you're good to go but when you check the next one same thing nothing but look at that three kilobytes we can see that something's happening here in this particular one it found new version 2.4.1 this is when we knew and that's today when it detected that there's a new version and it showed it up. And again, this runs every time you restart or load up Open Core Legacy Patcher or you log out and log back in. And it tells you everything it's doing. So if you're having any troubleshooting, go into this. Now, when we go over here, we can tell we're definitely doing something. This is we're applying the Open Core EFI. You can see that. In the, you can tell this one, probably root patches. Sure enough, root patches KDK, all the way through here. For troubleshooting, this log system is fantastic and it's got everything that you need to know when you're trying to troubleshoot something or something's not working use this log users your username library logs dortania right here everything you need now let's talk about mac os tahoe and the progress being made for open core legacy patcher unsupported macs mac os tahoe is going to come out most likely one week after the apple event on september 9th and same thing with ios 26 unless there's any kind of delays but most likely the entire suite will come out that Monday. So if we look at the calendar, we can see that on the 9th here, so maybe Monday on the 15th is when we'll see Mac OS Tahoe. That'll be all for supported Macs, but for Open Core Legacy Patcher, it's definitely different this year because of all the development work that has to be put into and all the changes in Mac OS Tahoe 26. If we go back to the Patcher support page, we can see, we've went over this before, but we can see all the issues that they have to get through. But we need to be real about the timeline for this. And it's very straightforward that they're hoping winter 2025. So let's just set our expectations here. No guarantees that it's gonna be that late, but there's no guarantees that it won't be going into next year. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. Could they surprise us and get it earlier? Sure. but. Dina K here is telling us for the overall timeline. Now, if we go back, we look at the GitHub, we can see some work being done here. You can see where the 2.4.1 here in our build actions, and we can see the work being done on Tahoe version. We don't know necessarily what's actually happening behind the scenes, 
until we see either an update from the developers or something that's going on on the GitHub here with some changes for 3.00. And that's what to expect. Again, let's keep our expectations in check. There's a lot of things that need to be done that developers are doing the best that they can, while also making sure that Sequoia, Sonoma, Ventura are working well. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'm looking forward to macOS Tahoe and what it brings to the support of Macs. And we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.